everyone, welcome to Computer Science 190, lecture number one. Welcome to college if you're a freshman. Um, again, I'm sorry that we have to meet online like this for the first three weeks. In this video, in this lecture, I'll be just slowly going everything you need to know about the, at least the first three weeks of this course, of this class. Um, yeah, I'll go over the syllabus, over the what all the, all the expectations, what you should know, what you will have to do, what you will not have to do, all that kind of stuff. If you guys have any questions, um, definitely let me know, send me an email, I'll try to respond as soon as I can, okay? So, let's get to the slides. Uh, Computer Science 190, lecture number one, introduction, August 18th. A little bit about myself. Um, my name is Steve Rubin, um, the original name is Konstantin, I'm Russian, as you can guess by my accent. I got my bachelor's in electrical engineering, master's in computer science, working hard towards PhD in computer science, I dedicated a grad school career towards algorithms and taxes instruments, so that's me standing in the, next to the logo. Normally I would ask you um, to tell me about a bit about yourself, right? I would ask you about your name, your major, why did you choose FMU, why did you choose this class, if you have any programming experience, um, those questions, right? Unfortunately, again, since we're doing it online, can't really do that. Now, another question I usually ask my students is, why do we need to go to college, right? Uh, why won't you just get a job after high school? And, of course, usually students say something like, they want to make a lot of money, they want to get a good job, they want to do something meaningful, they want to possibly change the world, they want to have mission and calling in life, they want to be fulfilled. And those are all good answers. Those are all good answers. In my opinion, though, um, the practical reason of why we go to college is to get a well-paid job, okay? And here's a, here's a very important point. That can be split into two parts. So the first part is fulfilling your responsibilities, right? Which means being good at what you do and not to get fired. In our case, in case of the software developers, people who do computer science, it's basically, it basically means writing the code well, right? Um, good quality code, code which actually solves the problem, which is doing what it's supposed to be doing and not doing anything it's not supposed to be doing. Okay, yeah, um, and in my personal experience and in the experience of like, I don't know, huge amount of students I've seen and taught, college is super hyper-focused on this part, is how to get, uh, sorry, uh, is fulfilling the responsibilities. 99% of the time, you just get in more and more new knowledge from college, from this, from the class, like this one, for example, right? But there is another hidden part which nobody really talks about. In my opinion, it's one of the biggest drawbacks of college education, which is actually getting a job. And that's an issue. So sometimes it can be an issue. Um, what do I mean? I mean, how to prepare the resume, what to write in the resume, what jobs to apply to, what jobs not to apply to. Um, if somebody asks you questions like, tell me about yourself, what is the biggest, um, like, why should we hire you, what makes you a good fit for this position, right? Yeah, if you're not prepared for answering those questions, it can be very stressful and you're kind of guaranteed not to answer that to the best of your ability, right? And um, in our department, I personally spent a lot of time giving as much knowledge, sharing as many tips as I can throughout my courses, which are 190, 226, 227. Um, but in general, again, I just noticed that nobody's really talking about this. So if you're a computer science student, that's um, like, we'll, we'll try to help out as much as we can. Um, but anyway, just keep in mind that this, right? So the stuff on the right is college is very good at, but nobody really talks about how to get a job and it's basically becomes your responsibility. It's completely up to you. I mean, so it's completely on you, completely on you, sorry. About this class, Computer Science 190, Programming Fundamentals, right? It provides a very good foundation of the class, um, sorry, of your, of your of computer science major, very good foundation. Uh, it's fast paced, it will make you work hard, most likely. It gives you a solid picture of your future career. So you probably saw a lot of TV shows when there is a guy who sits in the middle, like in the corner, dark corner, and he just types everything super fast, and he's talking to a computer. That's pretty much what you'll be doing uh, in this class, and what, that's what you'll be doing as a software developer. 
it's basically sitting in front of the computer solving a lot of uh, fun like fun problems and sometimes not fun difficult or easy issues problems okay um, what you'll be doing for the homeworks for this class is exactly what you'll be doing in your career as a software developer okay so that's why in my opinion it gives you a very solid picture understanding of your future career syllabus let's get to the syllabus computer science 190 right um okay so office hours let's talk about how the how the course will be structured um technically again it should be from 210 to 325 i think right anyway so when it's offline it should be like it'll be it'll be, it'll be in the office it'll be in the room uh, for the first three weeks, what we'll be doing is the following. I will be publishing lectures like this on this YouTube channel. They'll be labeled Computer Science 190, says 190, lecture number, let's say one, and then maybe topic, right? Um, in terms of online education, I found this way of publishing lectures actually the best because I can record it, I can edit it, right? So that's one. Number two, I can share my screen, right? So that's a very good uh, also advantage. Um, also, if I upload them uh, to YouTube, everybody knows how YouTube works, right? So there is no issue if you're navigating to, to YouTube. Um, also, I found that I can actually publish lectures from different courses. So this semester I'm teaching 190, 226, 350, 330. You're more than welcome to watch uh, the lectures of other courses as well completely up to you so they're kind of open right and you will kind of see the idea of what, what we'll be talking about if you can be a science major you, um, you will see what you'll be learning in the future um yeah so uh, another another reason for, for going with youtube while um teaching online i found that uh, for example if we do if you do zoom or like some kind of online streaming something like skype unfortunately a lot of people have issues with the internet unfortunately people would have uh, somebody got late, somebody's connection is not working, and especially if you're not recording, you're kind of losing the whole thing. It gets super stressful, unfortunately. Yeah, but with YouTube, it's just super stable, always works, everybody knows how to use it, right? You probably spend a lot of time on YouTube anyway, so why, why wouldn't you just pick up some knowledge from YouTube as well? Also, let's say for the quizzes, for... Um, midterms you'll be able to go back and watch those lectures again and maybe specific portions specific parts of the of the youtube videos maybe they'll help you as well okay three credit hours prerequisites very important prerequisites you need to have a c or better in math 111 or 121 okay or eligibility to take math courses higher than 121 um Okay, if you don't meet that prerequisites, you should not be here. I remember actually we made some exceptions for a few students. Um, they were not that good, they, so they um, they didn't have that and they struggled. They really struggled. So that's why if you guys don't have that, you should be um, dropping this class and just satisfying that prerequisite first. Um, you need to have at least C in this class in order to progress <clears throat> to computer science 225 and to <clears throat> 225 and 226 uh, textbook you will need this book introduction to java 10th or 11th edition doesn't matter by daniel leon okay so if i just google leon what does it look like images yeah it's usually this blue or this um, black okay this one is the most popular version okay moving on Topics covered. Okay, so now, um, I'm sure some of you have already programmed before. If you took some class in uh, high school or some you were learning online, okay, uh, that's all good. That's why it's possible that you actually have already enough knowledge to progress to Computer Science 226, which means like the second part of the, of the, uh, of the course sequence, right? Maybe you already have enough knowledge and this class will be too boring for you, okay? So, if that, um, here's what you have to do. Just uh, read through these topics, right? Uh, parts of Java program, out, like if you know Java, expressions, interactivity, making decisions, if else, if else, nested statements, for loops, right? Arrays. So read uh, thoroughly um, this chapter, this section, right? If you know everything about what you see here, in this case, please send me an e email. I'll send you a test which you have to go through. 
kind of to prove that you actually know all these concepts. If that's the case, then um, you should not waste your time in this class and 190 will move you forward to 226 um, because it kind of, it will, you will save up time and money and uh, this class will be too boring for you. If that's the case. If you have never programmed before, and that's usually the majority where the majority of students are at, then um, it's totally cool. This class um, doesn't assume, I'm not going to assume that you know you have any kind of knowledge about computers before. Okay. Now, um, let's talk about the final grade. So, assignments, homework assignments will be due every Monday. Okay. Every Monday at uh, 6 p.m. Okay. I'll most likely I'll publish them like on Thursday, Friday, Wednesday, and it will be due on Friday. All the homeworks all together, um, they'll be due on Monday, right? Uh, all the homeworks all together, there will be 20% of your final grade. The quizzes, we're going to have quizzes every Thursday. Not this Thursday, but starting from next Thursday, we're going to have quizzes every Thursday. Okay, they will be on Blackboard. Um, if it happens on uh, online, right, in this case, I will not be checking if you are... Um, so, technically, it should be closed, book, closed note, everything closed. If we're doing that online, during the online education, during the first three weeks, um, it will be everything open, but the questions will be more difficult. Then we're going to have midterm number one, 20% of your grade. Midterm number two, 20% of your grade. Final exam, 20% of your grade. And attendance and note taking 5%. So here's what we're going to do for the first three weeks of the attendance, for the attendance. So every Tuesday and Thursday, you're going to see a lecture published on YouTube. What I want you to do, again, uh, not today, starting from Thursday. What I want you to do, I wa you can watch it at any time you want, right? So it's not synchronized. You, um, you can watch it anytime. And I want you to take notes, handwritten, not typed up, handwritten notes while you're watching this. And um, after that, so you watch the lecture, take notes, and then take a photo of those notes, and I want you to submit them to the Blackboard, okay? Zip them up in the archive or RAR archive and submit them to the Blackboard. There'll be a way for us to prove that you actually kind of attended that virtual lecture, right? You can do it anytime on Tuesday and anytime on Thursday, right? But just do it within the, uh, within the day, within Tuesday and within Thursday. Hope it makes sense. Professionalism. Let's talk about professionalism. Okay, being professional, what does it mean, right? So, in general, uh, I ask you to have as few jokes as possible. You should call me Professor Rubin. Emails. So, in the and it's, it's very important. Please pay attention to what I'll, what I'll be telling now. Uh, in the subject, I want you to say computer science 190 uh, dot dot. Well, not dot, but um, colon, right? And then express the topic. For example, question about the homework, uh, issue with the ho assignment, um, question about the quiz, problem with something else, okay? And then, at the beginning of the body, so if you follow that link, you will see kind of the guideline of how to compose e emails, those emails which you're writing to me. So, you need to begin with a greeting. You would say, for example, hello, hi, dear, to whom it may concern, right? And then, um, thanking the recipient. Technically, it's a good thing to do, but we don't have to do it here in the classroom setting, okay? State your purpose. Very important to do. You need to say, I'm writing you to inquire about, I'm writing reference to, okay? Then, um, adding closing remarks. Very, also a very good thing to do, but not in our class. Uh, for example, thank you for your patience and cooperation. Thank you for consideration. If you have any questions, I look forward to from hearing from you. And um, it's very important for us. Uh, also, to end with the closing, you need to say best regards, sincerely, thank you, uh, don't say cheers, maybe best wishes, okay? Um, it's very important that you structure all the emails you send me that way, that way, okay? Now, very serious about that, I'm very serious. I will tolerate only one unprofessional email, I will warn you, uh, but for all other emails, you'll be penalized 1% of your final grade. Uh, smartphones are not allowed in the classroom, no smartphones on the table, okay, well, I'll put that in the backpack. Um, obviously, if somebody calls you, don't pick it up in the classroom, just leave the classroom and then talk. Why so strict? Okay, so it sounds, it probably sounds super strict. So here's the reason, because that affects your career. Um, an example I'm usually providing is this, I remember we had a student and every now and then we have a situation similar to this. 
basically very smart student everything is good he picked up an internship at a company local company and uh, he was very smart and he ended up not being hired and we were very surprised because he was super smart and then since we have a relationship with uh, the company we were talking to the manager and we were asking like so he's really good like why wouldn't you hire him and uh, they were saying that yes he's exceptionally good everything is cool however uh, when I start talking to him for some reason and maybe it's something psychological um, defense I don't know whatever that called he pulls out the phone he pulls out the phone and starts like doing something with the phone whenever I start whenever I want to talk to him and uh, same thing for the colleagues maybe he's super shy wouldn't really know right but um, that's one of the issues nowadays nowadays um, computer scientists, software developers are expected to be sociable, they expect to have good, good communication skills. And that's impossible if you're addicted to the phone all the time or doing, some, um, doing something else. So being professional is very, very important for your career. So the reason why I was so strict with you is because that affects your future career. Okay, and those emails actually is a very, very good signature of being professional versus not being professional. If somebody said, if somebody sends me like an email saying, "Hey, what's up?" Like that's like, I remember I actually had a uh, professor at UC, and he was saying that whenever he goes to email client, right, email server, uh, you know, it's like when you have um, email and it gives you the preview, like the first two lines or one line. If he, uh, he was saying like, if he says "What's up?" as the first word, he immediately deletes the email from his student. So even during the finals even during the final exams yes yeah, that's crazy so somebody can be like panicking about the exam but he deletes it um, it's super important to be professional okay moving on um, how to make it up attend tutoring sessions let's go to the syllabus yeah okay so attend tutoring sessions it's a super 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 important thing to do i would highly recommend doing this whenever you have an issue whenever some i'm not ex ex i didn't explain something correctly whenever you don't think you understand something definitely go to the tutoring center but in that in this case online tutoring center right so most likely again we'll help we'll hold all the office hours right here's my office hours and tutoring um, online for the rest of the semester because unfortunately our offices are too small we can't really be like six more than six feet like six feet apart from each other we can't really maintain that distance we need to take a look at the same computer the same monitor so that's not really uh social distancing right we can't really do that so that's why if you want if you want to go to tutoring session uh tutoring center right we'll have to do it online uh here's the schedule so monday wednesday from 9 to 10 30 on mondays also from 1 to 5 p.m um from 12 to 5 p.m tuesday thursday from 2 to 5 p.m no tutoring on friday what you have to do you need to go to this link and um, follow that link and sign up for a tutoring session okay appearing there at least once a week um, will add 0.2 percent per week for each week for each week when you attend in the tutoring center and you're asking questions and like for example you're receiving some feedback you improving you improving your skill and i definitely want to give you more points for doing this it's, it's very important in my opinion that's why i'll be able to award you with 0.2 percent if possible, of course, most likely not this semester, attend networking events, meet potential employers, introduce yourself. Um, also, send me a polished resume checked by the Career Center Advisors or Professor Rao, especially if you're um, a computer science major. Uh, make, like, check, have your resume checked by the Professor Rao, basically email her saying like, hey, I'm trying to make sure I have a good resume, can you please take a look at it? She will add some notes, she will make some notes, correct those notes, um, correct the mistakes, send it again to her, and then when she's happy with this, I'll give you 1.5% of extra credit. Create a professional LinkedIn profile and send me the link to that. I will add 1% of the final grade. No extra credit is added after the reading day. Assignments, okay. Um, ho again, homeworks are due on Monday at 6 p.m. Uh, there'll be the Java, Java assignments right throughout the semester. There'll be approximately 10 of them. Um, we'll be using blackboards, right? Late assignments will be accepted, but penalized. But penalized. I will drop 
at the, end, at the end of the semester, I will drop one single lowest homework grade. Okay, I will drop. For quizzes, our quizzes will be um, every Thursday, right? Every Thursday we're going to have a quiz. Um, again, not this Thursday, and I'll explain how exactly it's going to go online, but it will be on the Blackboard, okay? Quizzes must be submitted through the Blackboard. There will be no makeup quizzes. I will also drop one single lowest quiz grade. Midterms, there will be two midterm exams, okay, uh, and one comprehensive final exam. Exams will be everything closed um, if we do it offline. If we do it online, I will let you know how it's gonna, how we're going to go about that. But as of now, the plan is that for the first three weeks only, we'll go online. That's why, um, yes, there will be uh, everything closed. There will be no become exams. As a fi uh, the final exam will be comprehensive. Right, and in that case, I'm actually ready to give you one more benefit. I will replace uh, the final exam. I will replace uh, so the final exam will replace any one single lower exam grade. For example, if for the first midterm you received 60, for the second midterm you received 80, and for the final exam you also received 80, then that 80 will replace that 60. In this case, you'll get 80, 80, 80. Okay. If you get, for example, 50, 90, and then, for example, 80, right, that 80 will replace the 50, and then you'll get, basically, you'll have 80, 90, 80. Miscellaneous, um, not that important, I guess. Academic integrity, okay, so it's very important. Um, even, so no matter what kind of relationships you have with, um, with your friends, relatives, if you take a class together, no group homework assignments are allowed. Okay, unless otherwise stated, but most likely it's not going to happen. So the homeworks, quizzes, exams need to be your own original work. Francis Mary University has zero tolerance policy. All the rules are listed here. There is a link to academic integrity. Uh, this document may be uh, changed in the future, especially due to the pandemic. Let's see what happens throughout the semester. Um, let me go back. Okay, cool. So... Um, we we'll we'll talked about that. Now, now um, let's talk about the labs. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do for the labs. And again, most likely it's going to be well, definitely for the first, uh, I guess, three weeks. But when the first week will, there will be no labs, right? So like second, third week. Um, anyway, so the labs are going to be held the following way. I think it's like what is it? It's uh, from one to five, I think, right? Uh, basically, what's going to happen is that you will receive a link to a Zoom conference. You will need to go to that link on that specific time, right? So that'll be synchronous. Um, so everybody logs into Zoom. There will be a TA, your, te your teaching assistant, and he will be um, kind of explaining you the task for today, for this um, lab session. For example, there'll be assignment like, I don't know, you need to write a program which adds, let's say, two numbers together, okay? And uh, then what's going to happen next is that he's going to give you some you know, theoretical information, right? And then you guys will be in breakout rooms. I think like two people per room uh, or three people per room will do something like this. And TA will be jumping between the rooms and helping you out solve that problem. Okay, so you and your buddy, your partner, you guys will be solving that um, the problem. And TA every now and then will be hopping in and will be answering your questions, will be helping you out um, if you have any problems with the with assignment. So again, um, technically, I think it goes from one to five, just uh, whatever the, the schedule says is true, right? But usually what, ha what happens is, um, depending on the skill, some students are very smart and if you end up finishing up before, like within, within let's say half an hour or an hour or two hours, then, of course, you just need to show the result to your TA, and then uh, you can leave, okay? And then you can go uh, do something else, okay? But anyway, in terms of the lectures, uh, they'll be published, again, every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube. You can watch them anytime you want. Um, just take notes and submit them before the midnight. For the labs, you have to be there at a specific time, specified time, whatever section you're in. Uh, you have to be there, okay? Hope it makes sense. Perfect. I think that, uh, oh yeah, so uh, one more thing. So uh, what we're gonna do, we're going to install um, Java and Eclipse on your computer, right? Um, if you have 
Chromebook, Chromebook. We did not find a way to make it work on the Chromebook. So if you have a Chromebook, please send me an email and I'll give you um, a way, kind of, uh, um, I'll give you, um, I guess, a strategy how to avoid that, how we can kind of um, deal with your situation. But if you have Windows or Macintosh, here's what you need to do. I would highly recommend you install in Java and Eclipse on your machines. Uh, you will need that for the homeworks and for the classes as well, actually. Uh, I want you to try uh, following this video, right? Just kind of, it's kind of a tutorial. Um, I actually spent a lot of time looking for tutorials which definitely work, uh, like regardless of what you're using, kind of what version of the Windows or Macintosh uh, you're working with, they will definitely work. I never received any complaints for the past three years, definitely. Anyway, so if you have a Mac, please follow this video, okay? And if you have a Windows, please follow this video. Just do exactly what they do, okay? And um, yeah. Um, you can also go ahead and start learning Java, basic syntax of Java, using the, following this video, okay? If you want to. Whew. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for today. Uh, thank you guys for your patience. Um, again, sorry if that we have to meet online for the first two weeks. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Have a good night. Have a good day. Bye-bye.